on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, April 24th. It's deadline day. As a matter of fact, a deal just happened while we were getting in the intro. We're going to tell you about it as soon as we get going. Kevin's on the other side. He's like, what happened? What? Who did they sign? What's going on? We're going to get you ready for that. LA Galaxy get a win over Austin. Uh, talk a whole bunch about that as well. And of course, uh, get you at least pointed in the right direction as the Galaxy get ready for a long travel day on Thursday to head over to Orlando. It's Orlando and the LA Galaxy coming up on Saturday. So a lot to get to. Um, so we'll just we'll, we'll figure out exactly what's going on with all this fun transfer news and help us do that. He's back. We're glad to have him. It's Kevin the Panda Baxter. Kev, how you doing, buddy? Hey, we're not going to have any witty banner. Just, just go right to the deal. What do we know? What happened? Well, yeah, I know. Zava? Um, Zava's I, coming? No, no, not Zava. Uh, Tom Bogert just reporting that the LA Galaxy have acquired, and this is after they've already acquired uh, Vivi, and we'll talk about all that as we get through, uh, but just 20-year-old uh, LA Galaxy Academy, former LA Galaxy Academy defender, uh, Mauricio Cuevas, uh, who is 20. Um, really interesting. This is a guy who got went away and came back, Kevin, it's still to me, and and we were going to put this at the back end because we're like, well, we'll talk about uh, Gino, Vivi, and all that stuff, but being it's happening right now, uh, it still seems to me like these are little setup moves. Now, if I am correct with all my roster guides and everything that's going on, this is the 29th player out of 30 that the LA Galaxy can sign, okay? Signing, uh, and if you missed it earlier today, literally rewriting the show as we go, Kevin, Um if you missed it earlier today, uh, the LA Galaxy announced the signing of Gino Vivi. This was their second round draft pick. Uh, he's an international, so they had to send $164,000 or $165,200 over to New York City FC. Uh, and this is 2024 general allocation money. So they're actually playing nothing for this year for an international slot because uh, Gino Vivi takes up an international slot. So... Um, there's a lot to sort of unpack on deadline day as we go. And, and I should point out less than two hours now until the window closes, closes at 10 p.m. Pacific time. That's midnight central standard time. Um, so that's sort of where we're, we're sitting. So Cuevas uh, is in. Uh, Gino Vivi is in. To me, these feel like setup moves. Um, and I just I, I, listen, this very well, Kevin, could be the, the galaxy going quietly into the night right now. Um, we were actually trying to get somebody from the LA Galaxy front office to talk to us tonight, and they were concerned they were going to be busy tonight. So I, I have a feeling that they're going to remain a little busy with with two hours here, and and I think that's how that's going to go. But I mean, yeah, they they, they begged off at about eight o'clock this morning, saying they expected to be busy. And 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 we should say too, we talked the, the the window closes at ten o'clock. This show on Monday, um, this show will go off the air about nine thirty, the live show about nine thirty, so a half hour before. And you and I were talking before about. Why don't we just keep going up to ten? See what happens. Go up to ten, and and then we realize this is the galaxy. I mean, they can make a deal tonight. We might not find out until July, um, July you know, or, based on or how, tomorrow. Yeah, or tomorrow but, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the way the Tyler Board thing when he was playing in a game and they wouldn't even tell us who he was, um, they wouldn't because he hadn't officially passed his physical. So, um, yeah, the galaxy could make moves tonight. We may find out about them as we just did the earlier two moves. We may not find out about to, until tomorrow or. Maybe someone strange suits up in Orlando, and then we find out who that is. Yeah, it, it's uh, definitely definitely interesting in terms of how it all goes down. I, I mean, the LA Galaxy coming off some positive news, too, getting the win against Austin. It was 
Uh, it was one of those. Uh, I ran into Joe Tatino uh, before the match as I was walking up the stairs with my pupusas. I made it in time for pupusas for the first time. So I was all excited about that and saw Joe. I said, I said, they're winning the night, right? And he goes, it would be a good night for it, right? And I said, I sort of, I sort of feel that way. I was talking to Kevin Acevedo of PR. I go, they're winning tonight, right? And he was, he was like, he was like, you know, hey, that's like, I, he goes, I like the positivity. I'm like, I was, I was calling. I mean, they should, they should have won that game. That was a game, one of the first but all they year. They did, they did win it. But they did win it. They actually did yes, win it. Yes. They, you said they should have won. They, no one was there to see it, but they, they did. I, I read about it. I saw that the results were in the paper. They, they but, did win. They did win. Well, that's, that's very good. Um, yeah, it's. It's really interesting to me just um, how everything's set up for that game and how it's all going. But now we get back to transfer window and all the stuff. This is Greg Vanny after the game is basically saying, you know, remember whenever I told you on Thursday that I was waiting for some more clarity on stuff? Well, I didn't get quite the clarity I wanted. Um, and therefore, you know, this is this is sort of where we're at. So I'm expecting to get more clarity after the game tonight. And so basically it's about all these things. Now, I think they've pretty much ruled in that the LA Galaxy were going after Gruel. Um, who was the Austrian Bundesliga midfielder, and that was probably an international slot and everything. And they, his team didn't want to let him go because they were playing in a cup final, which they were, I guess, maybe surprised to be in. It was one of those. And they wanted him for that. And that that game takes place on April 30th, which is uh, six days from today. Um, and so they, they were like, we'll give them to you afterwards. And I was like, well, the Galaxy are like, well, we can't do it afterwards. You know, that's how that's well, the restrictions. Can, but I, you know, I, I never believe that story. That just sounds like bargaining to me. I mean, it can be, but it's also here's the problem. If you have twenty dollars in your pocket, right, and you're like, hey, I'll give you eighteen dollars for that gruel guy, and they're like, mm, no, it's gonna have to be more than that because he's playing in a cup final the whole day. And you're like, all right, fine, listen, I I mean it. I don't have any more than twenty dollars. This is all I have. You're gonna have to take it. You're gonna have to leave it. And I'm sure this other team is like, oh, you have more money, L.A. Galaxy, but in in salary cap land, in Tam land, you may have. Just $20, and that's all you have, and you can't go above it, and Vanny even mentioned it. I'm not for leaving anybody off the hook, Kevin. I think if you wait this long and you fail to get some of the targets that you were trying to do, then it's you You had your opportunity for months yeah, and months it, to it, make it happen. That just sounds like bargaining, and I think the Galaxy are kind of in the same situation as Chivas down in Mexico, where everyone knows Chivas will only sign a Mexican player, so a Mexican player that becomes available Chivas has to outpay, or, or the, Chivas is asked to pay more because they know other teams know they need them. This, these players, it's I think it's the same thing with the Galaxy. When Galaxy go after a player, I think other teams ask more than they would ask for Sporting Kansas City or Real Salt Lake to play because they know it's the Galaxy, it's AEG, it's the team that signed Beckham. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so a, a cup final, you're, you're going to hold on to a guy for six days for a cup game that he didn't expect to be in anyways when perhaps. You know, you're getting a good deal. I mean, I, I don't know. It just it just felt like negotiating. I would not be surprised to see that player wind up with the Galaxy. But the Areola rumors really got hot and heavy today. So too. let's talk about that. And and I have two from Tom Bogert who who put out earlier today. By the way, congratulations to Tom working over the at, at the Athletic uh, uh, today. It was his first day in in the Athletic office instead of for MLS Soccer as an independent. Um, he's, he's, he doesn't go to the office. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Um, Metaphorically and, speaking. And, and he does it on on transfer day, uh, which is always fun. But he basically tweeted out earlier this morning, LA Galaxy pursuing FC Dallas and U.S. men's national team winger Paul Areola ahead of tonight's deadline. Sources stress Dallas rejected the notion out of hand and don't want to lose Areola. LA Galaxy have other targets. Deal would have to be a new MLS record in terms of general allocation money. I mean, listen, there's a lot of people who all of a sudden put on their U.S. men's national team hat. They're like, oh, he sucks for the U.S. men's national team. I don't want him on my team. That's my that's my whiny fan voice whenever like they're like, hey, the whole deal. I'll tell you right now, Paul Ariola had 16, goal, or 16 goals and assists, right? So six, I think it was uh, six goals, 10 assists last year. Uh, he fits into so many systems that he is widely regarded as like one of the best puzzle pieces you can put on uh, on on the field, and apparently the LA Galaxy were trying to go after Ariola earlier, uh, before Dallas start, got him. Where did he start his career? Uh, he started it in the LA Galaxy Academy, right? And so I have contacted all of my sources in in, in Dallas, Dallas right. and been working the phones, and have gotten crickets back, Nothing, <laughs> no responses. So you and I were talking about this before. You 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 seem somewhat optimistic. I, I'm looking at it from the Dallas perspective, and. It would have to be a boatload of money. I know he's not exactly, um, you know, their top guy right now, uh, but they are a playoff team. Speaking of playoffs, by the way, the Galaxy, after their first win, are now just three points below the line. Yeah, They I could know. go above the 
can, we, we can start talking about magic numbers here real soon since a playoff berth. But I, I, why would Ariola, why would Dallas want to get rid of Ariola? And I think Ariola, I mean, despite the fact he apparently, according to Tom Bogart, uh, was not interested in the deal, um, who wouldn't want to come back home unless he just felt like he didn't want to play in their system or didn't want to play with the personnel that is here? But he's got a chance to come back home. He's from San Diego. He, you know, this is where he started. It seems to make more sense to Areola than it, uh, to me. It makes more sense to Areola than it does to Dallas. And, and just Dallas gets a boatload of money that they know exactly where they're going to spend it on. This would appear to hurt them, I think. It, it's tough. I will say this. I think it's tough to do this late in the window, right? Because basically Dallas doesn't have anybody to replace them with. Maybe I can go through scenarios of which you could you could make this happen. Um, and that's sort of. You know, everybody's on the on the Gino Vivi thing and saying, why would you spend an international slot, one hundred and sixty five thousand two hundred dollars for a for for a guy who is your second round draft pick and who maybe won't play that much? Um, I'll tell you this. You Here's the thing is that, first of all, it's low cost, high reward for for Gino Vivi. Let's let's progress through this. That way we can get to why Paul Ariola could still be coming. Right. Let's let's make it happen. Let's force it into existence. Um so uh, for me, with Gino Vivi, uh, you're, it's low cost, high reward, right? You're not paying a whole bunch of money. Even the 162000 that you're paying on the international slot, not that much. But here's something that could absolutely happen is the LA Galaxy could decide that Gino Vivi could get loaned down to Galaxy 2. What happens to that international slot, Kevin? Does it stay open? It's, yeah. Well, yeah, it opens up. It opens up. So they could technically bring in an international player. Now... There's some argument here, and I think I talked about it on my uh, post game uh, on Twitter whenever I did post game driving home uh, down the 405 freeway on my way to get Kane's chicken fingers. Um, was that uh, some people call this a loophole, and I don't. In any other year, you're allowed to add free agents outside the transfer window, right? If you're not attached to anybody, you can add a free agent, right, Kevin? That's we we know those those rules are sort of there. The LA Galaxy even with the punishment that is going on, should be able to add free agents outside of the windows. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you can add a free agent during summertime because they're banned from adding internationals during the summer transfer window. That's very clearly s- s- uh, spelled out in the release that we got of what they said the rules were. So if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to go get Jaime Rod- Rodriguez, right? Um, he's a free agent. You could go get him. You could bring him in. You could loan Juno VV down to Galaxy 2 and you have a spot open. So... The international slot is not the panic move that I think a lot of people think it is. It could end up that they're absolutely going to use it for Gino Vivi. I'm just saying that you could use it for bigger things. There's flexibility within that international slot and with Gino Vivi's slot as well. So that's that's first. All right. Now let's go to uh, Mauricio Cuevas because now I, we have to sort of change everything that we know. Why are the LA Galaxy bringing in another defender? Uh, I think he's another U20 guy on the... U.S. U-20s, right? So you're talking about the U-20 World Cup that's going to be happening in Argentina. The Galaxy would have Cuevas, would have Neil, and would have uh, uh, Julian Aude for for Argentina as U-20 players. It has been hinted at so far that perhaps the LA Galaxy will not be releasing some of those guys to go down and play in that U-20 thing. So if you're worried about that part, just that's what we've been sort of... It's been the grumble that's been going on. It's sort of like, oh, this sounds like this might not happen. It doesn't mean anything is final. They absolutely could still go. It sort of depends on the positions and where they are with everything. But Jalen Neal's a stone lock starter every day for the LA Galaxy. So that would be difficult. The way uh, Julian Alde played, he's a stone lock starter right now. And he's played like started one game, right? So, but you know, yes. we were talking about this before and, and, I really don't like it. I mean, I understand you're you're absolutely right, and and I'll talk in a second about history in this, on this subject. But you know, Greg Vanny was a national team player. He knows how important this is. Yes, it's a U20 game. It's an uh, you know it, they are not forced to give players up like they for, were for senior teams. I remember the 2012 Olympics were in London. Chicharito was playing for Manchester United in the same country. It was training camp. There were no games on the horizon for a couple of weeks. Manchester United uh, refused to let Chicharito. Uh, um, you know, take a tra- train across England to go to London to play in in the Olympics, where Mexico won a gold medal. So, and they were right to do that because the Olympics is an underage tournament, and teams do not have to give people up. It, it, same thing happened with uh, uh, in there were a couple of uh, well, it might have been that same Olympics with uh, Neymar. You know, he did get to play, but he had to get special uh, a release from his team. So, right, uh, you know, especially, but in this case, I'd love to see Jalen Neal go because I like to see the U.S. do well, but. 
yes, you were pointing out Audi, you know, that tournament, the U20 tournament is in Argentina, in his homeland. Um, that place is going to be rocking, if, especially if Argentina does well. I'm sure he would love to be a part of that. I'm sure it's a difficult decision for Greg, you know, if he decides right. to deny him to go there. But, right. you know, the Galaxy, they're kind of in bad straits right now, and they need all hands on deck. Okay, so you you and I understand. Yep, correct. Let's let's continue to put the building blocks together. By the way, Nelson, uh, two dollars super chat. So Gino VV is he a winger? He mostly likes to play on the right hand side. He can play in the middle. He can play on the left. He's mostly a right side guy. Who plays on the right side for the other Galaxy? Douglas Costa. So as in terms of a backup, for now, yeah, for in now. terms of a backup, <laughs> Gino VV is that guy. Uh, Galaxy Dude ninety six says we'll see OG drop breaking news tonight. Probably not. Although we did see something that broke basically right as we were talking. So we're already talking about that so now you got Cuevas okay you have Vivi okay so you're putting these pieces together and you're sort of like okay these things are sort of coming together uh if you're bringing in Cuevas maybe that means that Raheem Edwards is surplus to your requirements all of a sudden and by the way big leap big jump very quickly to be like out the starter he's had you know a, a substitute appearance and a start even though he's looked real real good um, so maybe you say, okay, with this, I have sort of the backups that I want, the backups I need. I got everything in place. So maybe you can move somebody like Raheem Edwards. Do you want to, let's talk quickly about the game. Who was not in the 20 man lineup over, uh, over the, the weekend against Austin? Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. I yes. Panda. Efrain Alvarez. Efrain Alvarez isn't there. So do we want to add Raheem Edwards and Efrain Alvarez in a package deal with general allocation money? Two FC Dallas for Paul Areola. You have the roster spots. You probably have the money whenever everything is finally said and done, right? So you could possibly pull that off. You don't need the international slot, right? Because one of the reasons that you could possibly have signed VV was because you knew you didn't need the international slot, right? And so now it's just about making the little deals that make the big deal happen. We've seen this as sort of like uh, pre-shocks perhaps for an earthquake. Now, this is very much pie in the sky optimism. We are giving the front office all the benefit of the doubt that they're able to pull off a blockbuster deal here with less than two hours left in the in the transfer window. But there's some, some of these moves either don't stack up on their face or they're a little underwhelming. Um, I, I think Greg Vanny was pretty cautious as well, Kevin, to say that he didn't want to make a signing just to make a signing. They wanted the right piece in the right position. None of the players that they have signed so far um, are what I would say bad deals or something that is cost too much money to be, you know, a, a good deal just in, on their own. But as a whole, when you're expecting possibly a starter slash backup to Douglas Costa, or maybe Douglas Costa is going to come off the bench because maybe that's his best role. Um, you don't have that guy on this team yet. All right. That's well, it. you know, don't, don't forget depth's going to be really important with all the games they are going to have this summer. So it's okay to have three outside backs. You know, you, you don't have to say, okay, well, Cuevas takes the spot of Raheem Edwards and Raheem Edwards is out. You, you, you could keep both of them, but the idea that you're talking about, you know, this, this kind of complex multiplayer, you know, trade um let's keep in mind that will Kuntz, although he was just announced a couple of weeks ago he he's been boots on the ground for uh probably a month six weeks um this is the kind of trade and i'm not taking anything away from greg vanny but greg vanny is also the coach of the team he mm -hmm. needs to coach the team it's a little hard he's got to go out on the field and you know tell someone in the office hey you know make a couple of phone calls check in on this see where we are with this guy that's what Will Kuntz is doing. Will Kuntz is the guy. My understanding is Greg Vanny says, we want to get this guy. Here's how he fits in. Go at it, Will. If right. they pull off something like this, I think uh, it would seem to me that that would be evidence that the Will Kuntz effect is already you know, taking hold because someone has to put that stuff together. And again, Greg Vanny can do that, but Greg Vanny can't, probably can't do that while he's coaching the team. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it, there is a complexity that if you stare all day at a spreadsheet, you understand more than if you're out there at training doing some different things. There's this, the, the MLS rules are stupid. Will Kuntz has a lot of experience manipulating and interpreting yeah, he wrote some of them. and writing, he wrote some yeah, yeah ones. writing some of those roster rules. He's not a horrible guy to have trying to figure this stuff out. So, um, yeah, that's sort of where we sit with the transfer rumors and you know, Paul Areola is really interesting. Um, as as a starter, he is he's just very good at what he does. I don't think he's the flashiest player, um, but in Major League Soccer and your ability to have a guy show up. Now, listen, he's had some knocks. He's had some injuries. Uh, those are questions. You're going to put him in a spot where basically it's him and Douglas Costa um, who are going to sort of probably rotate off of each other. But 
that's kind of what you expected. Now, Greg Vanny, again, saying they, they wanted to save some powder for the summer as well. So, you know, unless this all sort of drops, I think, favorably for them, where they get exactly what they want for the amount of money they want, if they're going after Areola, this feels like uh, we're doing something now that we were possibly going to do in the summer. The other part about this is whenever I saw the Areola thing at first, I sort of sat there and said, you know, is this the Galaxy testing the waters for summer for Areola, perhaps? Um, and sort of saying, hey, you know, we're kind of thinking about Paul coming over. What, you know, what what can we do to make this happen? And maybe this is initial talks more than it is about this window right now. So, um, but that's the thing. You could also, if you wanted to, if you wanted to look glass half empty at all this stuff, you could say that the LA Galaxy needed a winger. Uh, they needed somebody who would be on the offensive side, score goals, create assists, Kevin. And as of right now, they have not added that person to this roster. And so they're clearly going to be de 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 uh, depending on, on Douglas Costa. That's, that's what well, that says. And you're right talking about the summer. This is exactly the kind of deal that the Galaxy are going to have to do in the summer. Go to another team, M MLS, and try to get someone who could be an impact player. I also understand being around Paul with the national team. He's a pretty good locker room guy. He's a pretty solid character guy, uh, which is something the Galaxy can use too. But, um, you, you know, if you had your druthers and you're the Galaxy, he might even be a better guy to, to bring in in the summer if you can still get him because that we saw that infusion, what it did for the last – 10 games down the stretch last year, it sort of changed their team to bring in some help. Um, I, I think you're going to need to do that again this uh, this year. I think all MLS teams could sort of benefit from that late season addition, which sort of changes things up a little bit. Certainly helped the Galaxy last year. Um, if they can get Ariel now, obviously you want them for 26 games, not for six. But, um, you know, it, it would be a good – if they're really serious about this, it wouldn't be a bad thing to put on the table in the summer too. I am I am trying to uh, to read all the stuff on on Cuevas as we're going through this as well. Um, uh, yep, yep. I'm, I'm just reading through to see Cuevas twenty is a product of the LA Galaxy Academy system. We knew that before signing with uh, Club Bruges in, in 2022. He made 23 appearances. Defender was part of the United States winning side of the U U20 Concacaf Championship as a contention to make the squad for the U U20 World Cup in May. I mean, Cuevas may not be a starter, may get released to go for that if this whole thing sort of continues to build up speed. We'll see about the other guys uh, on the LA Galaxy team. All right, so that's that's it. Can we can we put transfer like to bed for a little bit and, and no, talk about no, game? It, oh, okay. I think I think we both need to kind of watch our still yeah. nothing. Yeah, I, yeah. Else. From your from, from your from your sources. Um, so now we're at uh, about an hour and a little less than an hour and 40 minutes as the window closes. It closes again at 10 p.m. Uh, that's 12 a.m. or midnight uh, Central Standard Time. Um, so we'll watch that as we go along. But let's talk a little bit about this game. Uh, the LA Galaxy winners, 2 nothing winners over Austin. Uh, I believe this is their third shutout this year. Uh, it's the only one that they've actually won. The other ones were draws and 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, so the Galaxy have been playing, like at least defensively, they have some indication that the defense is really starting to come together. I thought Austin was rather toothless. Uh, some of the mistakes that happened early on in this game, I think were a result of, of bad LA galaxy plays. Um, I, Jalen Neal and, and Jonathan Klinsman sort of fumbling into each other at the beginning of the game would be one that I would highlight. Uh, I thought uh, overall the LA galaxy played very well, but the big thing, the big takeaway for me before we even get into the, to the tactics and the lineup and everything is how quickly this team got into transition, Kevin. It was something that we have not really seen them do, which is something that they used to do a bunch with Kevin Cabral, right? And I know everybody's Kevin Cabral or Sam Grancier, right? And all these guys is get out on the counter, create the turnover, turn the ball over, make a couple passes, and then break through on the outside or create space or find ways to do that. And in this particular game, I thought the LA Galaxy were were very dangerous in transitions. Greg Vanny talked about it after the game even. He said it was important that we got the right guys making the right run in those situations. And he goes, and we talked specifically about that for this game. Um, so so really interesting. The other the other interesting part is we get to the uh, the lineups. A 4-4-2, Kevin. And everybody here is going to start. Well, not jumping. really. It, not yeah. really. Uh, see? Why do you say that? You, you're because like everybody it was else. A, it, no, it, it was Please a tell me. 4 2 it was it maybe it looked on paper like a four four two, but I I definitely yeah. think that they attacked with a three five two, it, it, and that they and that they played defense with with uh with more of a five man back line at least four. They defended in a four four two or the base formation, as Vanny said afterwards. I know I don't understand why people want to argue against the four four two. It was very clearly a four four two, very clearly. The only difference was Aude. 
Aude would get forward whenever it was time to attack, and he would drop back into that defense. So 4-4-2 in defense or possession, but once possession progressed to a certain point, Audi would get up, and then it would drop into a 3-5-2. Again, the Galaxy have done this for most of the year, um, but Aude does it, I think, at a better clip. And that's sort but of But you know what this dis- disproves the whole Vanny thing of oh we can't play Chicharito and Jovlich together we can't play the 442 we can't have two forwards. Uh, y- y- we we know that p- some players in that dressing room have been pushing for this for a while. They yes. wanted to see the two forwards together on the field at the same time. I think part of this may have been Vanny saying okay okay we'll do it. We'll show you it's not going to work. Well, it worked. So now what do you do? Do, do they stay with this formation? It worked really well. Vanny was very clear. He said he thought this was the best game that those guys have played together. He said they didn't make the same runs. He says a lot of times whenever you play them, you have two guys who are both waiting for the final action, right? He's like two guys who are both strikers who want to be on the end of something at the end, and they both make moves and make runs to be that guy on the final end. Instead, he needed somebody to support the other one, and he thought in this game that Jovalich playing, that, uh, that Chicharito playing, uh, together that they were very much a good give and and give and go type of situation one would move into the forward in order to draw attention it would then be an assist to the other guy I mean you saw it I don't know in the first half I think Jovalich and Chicharito both ran over the ball more times than they probably should have just passed the ball off or, or shot it from where they were um, the first half was sort of just a little bit like 95% they were getting it right and the last 5% weren't really clicking for them um, but this was, and he called it out specifically, he says, this was, I thought, their best game together. And if they want to continue to play together, they need to have more games like this. Um, because I liked the different levels that they provided in this, and I liked the assists. I mean, Jovalich, and I called it lucky. Um, I went back and saw the replay, and I didn't get to see a replay in the in the stadium. But Jovalich's pass inside the Chicharito is a thing of beauty. Uh, in traffic, cutting it back against the defender who's going there and finding Chicha in there to score the goal perfect. Jovalich had a very, very good game for him. I know he didn't score goals, but he had a very, very good game. And so if they continue to play like that, then I can absolutely see something like a three, five, two. Well, you know what my biggest takeaway was, was just how much Austin sucks this year. I mean, they're God, they're horrible. Yeah. They have been, it was, they were looked at next year, like, you know, last year, rather like, like they had really found something and, and they were really good. And, and this year, just nothing is working. They just look horrible. Austin is not a good team. I mean, you need to view the win through that, but it was a dominant win over a team that's not good, and that's something that the Galaxy haven't really showed, right? Even even the teams they did play early on, um, you know, they didn't didn't show that. But you're and, absolutely and, right. Austin wasn't good. And now they have their longest road trip of the season coming up. I, I, I don't know that Orlando's the greatest team in the league. They did win U.S. Open Cup last year. They were a playoff team. But uh, the travel and to a very humid uh, environment, um, th- this is a, will be a challenging game. I mean, the, the Galaxy are on a high coming off their first win, you know, three points out of playoff position. Right. But this is this is going to be a difficult, difficult trip for a West Coast team. Yeah, it's a long trip. It's it's not one that's they have to leave early on Thursday morning, which basically means they'll be traveling all day on Thursday. They'll train Friday morning, and then they have the game on Saturday evening, seven thirty local time, four thirty uh, Pacific Coast time. So, I mean, you have all that stuff sort of set up. But that being said, Orlando a little wishy-washy in some of the things that they've been doing. Austin was, was very much, I mean, you're looking at the LA galaxy who are, I think this season now in this upward trajectory, you can sort of see they're getting guys healthy. They're getting guys together, a back line of Ade, a back line of Jalen Neal. I can't believe that the LA galaxy are rolling out like 19, 20, 21 year olds on the back line all day long. And then they got Martin, uh, Greg Vanny joked around. He said, but Martin's like an honorary, like 19, 20 year old. I said, "I'm, I'm sure he is. Um, but, Kevin, but that's the guy you need to bring. You, you need a guy like that to be on the field with those young kids. And by the way, the Orlando trip, they are chartering makes a huge difference. Yeah, I, it does. And, and that means they can do it. But no, you're right. You have to have Martine in there. You have, I mean, he's what makes a lot of things click because he has sort of that. But I mean, Jalen Neal is a lock starter. Caligari has been lights out since starting on the right hand side. Um, so getting him in there out probably I, so this is my opinion. This is not going to show up on the stats sheet out I think was the best player on the field. Um, he's he's so smart with how he makes runs, how he shapes his runs, how he shapes his body. Um, the ability to know when to go, know when to stay, know how to get back. He's he's sneaky fast with being six feet and being able to gobble up a lot of ground whenever he runs. He's sneaky fast. He can get back. He can cover things. He's young. He can run forever. 
Uh, he didn't look tired the whole game. And that's what makes the 3-5-2 work. That's what makes the 4-4-2 work. That's what makes these things work. And the two strikers up top were absolutely pivotal to what they were trying to do for one reason for me is getting into the transition, getting more guys involved in those breaks. You would see the Galaxy breaking with three or four players every single time. You haven't seen that all year. You see one guy breaking and there's no support there. Oh, and by the way, before we get too far away from Orlando, Ricky Pooj will not be making that trip, correct? Yeah, Ricky Pooj picks up a yellow card in the third minute. Uh, by the way, rightfully deserved yellow card. Uh, you can't stomp on a guy. Uh, but Ricky has five yellow cards now. It, that happened quickly, right? You're in, you're in your seventh, well, eighth game, and you got it's, five it's yellow cards? Understandable. Every team is targeting him. Just, you know, like uh, back in the NHL days, everyone's going after Gretzky. They know that that's, he's the motor that makes that team run. He's a little guy, small. Uh, you know, they go after him. But... What I was what I was going to ask you when you talk about Audi and Caligari, what have you been talking about all season? The Galaxy are not wide enough. There's no play from the wings. Now maybe they're not wingers, but now we got guys going wide and playing the ball in from the wings. Yeah, and and I think you said I think you saw the width. I think you saw the speed. I think you you saw those things, um, you know, manifest themselves in all positives in this particular one. I thought the Galaxy transition defense was very good. Uh, I think Austin got absolutely jobbed on that first goal. Uh, I think he was onside. Now, there's some... I think it was uh, Driussi who was down behind the play during this whole thing, and the defender sort of runs in his general direction, and I don't know if they're like, well, maybe he impeded them in the whole deal, but it end, ended up... They called it offside, and then nobody overturned it. Um, I thought perhaps it would be it would be uh, uh, overturned whenever they saw it, but uh, that didn't happen. That would have let uh, Austin score the first goal. That would have, as it is, the LA Galaxy scored the first goal for only the second time all season, Kevin. Uh, the first time they actually won, the first game that they ever scored the first goal in was the very first game of the season for them against FC Dallas. Um, so it was... You know, there's a lot of things that you can point to of things going right. And that's what happens whenever you play a bad team, too. Whenever you have a team that puts out a good performance. Um, but I thought Damien's uh, opening question was, well, it looks like you guys remembered how to win, huh? I was like, all right, here we go. Rock and roll uh, very early on. So um, I was just really impressed with with Aude. I was really impressed with Ricky Pooch. I thought Ricky played outstanding. I thought Delgado had a really good game. But again, let's put it in perspective. Austin's not good you would expect these guys to tear them apart. And they did, even though it's the galaxy's first win of the season. And you should be like ecstatic about that. If you're a galaxy fan, Kevin, it, you, I this, still think you should put it in the perspective of they should have won that game. Well, so, so who starts in Ricky's place in Orlando? Is it, is it memo? Is it, is it Tyler Boyd? I mean, I think if it's me, I try to, I always, Ephraim? I always go for change as little as possible, right? So let's change as little as possible because you have a system. First of all, you're going to have to change more than you want to because nobody can play the Ricky push part because Ricky Ricky's very, very good. He does things that no, nobody else on the on the field can do in terms of evading, in terms of creating, in terms of turning and passing and doing all those things. Uh, I would think about moving Brugman up into that position because he can play a lot of line-breaking passes and bring Memo uh, into the center. Memo, Memo is a central mid midfielder. This is why they got him, is to be able to come in and play these. He, though, could probably play the 10 maybe better than Brugman. And if you don't want to change a lot of things, you could drop Memo into that spot. Exactly. You could bring Efrain in as a 10 as well. You could give that a shot. Uh, but with him not being on the bench and he did come back from Mexico, uh, the Mexico uh, call up where he sat on the bench uh, in that. Let's put that in the context of things. Yeah. We, we talked about why he was there. It wasn't to play. Yeah. It, it, he was to, to, to fill, a, fill a spot. He was close. He was close. He could get there quickly. Um, so, uh, so with that being said, I don't know that Efrain Alvarez is going to be in Orlando <laughs> in order to play. That's again, tinfoil hat, but, um, I think we're, I think we're allowed to speculate on this, um, in, in terms of how everything is sort of coming together. So, I mean, looking in this game, I thought it was, I thought it was really, I thought they played well. I mean, the lineup was something that I think you want to repeat as much as possible. Um, you want to do it over and over and over again, uh, until you can't do it anymore. Um, and this, this team seems to play well in that formation, doing those things. If Chicharito and Jovalich can, can, can put together those things and Ricky Pusch had a great goal. Ricky Pusch had a good assist, uh, 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 you know, some good passes in that as well. Um, so you, you put all these things together and I think that the galaxy again are sort of looking a little more than like we thought they were going to look Kevin, whenever this season started, this sort of was like the galaxy that you sort of expected baseline lowest level galaxy should really be that game against Austin for me. But not everyone was happy with the way that Greg managed this game. 
chief among the unhappy people was Dejan Jovalich, the guy who we would have thought would have been the happiest. This is tough for me. I told you before before we started recording because we talked about it a little bit. Um, Douglas Costa came on during this time, by the way, and he got booed whenever he came on. That's something we'll talk about here in a second. I, it's not I, the only reason I bring that up is that I was not paying attention to Douglas Costa coming on and getting booed, and I didn't even hear it because I was watching Dejan Jovalich go right past Greg Vanny down the bench, and then he walked straight on. And I, I think Alex Ruiz was sitting next to me. Alex like hits me and he goes, "Hey, Jovalich is headed straight to the locker room." And Jovalich is up there clapping to the fans like, "Thank you very much." But he was also like a little sarcastic, like it was almost a little bit too much. And you're like. Something weird's going on. And so he walks down and he goes by the subs and the subs like to warm up in that corner. And so he's going by the subs and Eric Zavaleta gets in his way and he's like, what are you doing? Like, you, I'm obviously guessing what they're saying because I don't know. But he's like, what are you doing? Like, get back to the bench. Then he like brushes back Eric Zavaleta trying to get to the locker room because he's done. He doesn't want to be on the bench anymore. He's angry. He wanted to stay in. He wanted to get his goals. He wanted his time. He wanted all these things. And then Raheem Edwards gets in front of him and sort of, I think, talks some sense into him. It was like, turn around, go back to the bench. Right now, this is ridiculous. You're being ridiculous. Get to the bench. And so Jovalich turned around and went to the bench. Now, we're not in the locker room. We don't know what's going on. But we do know that in two of the last three games, we've had players that are important to the to the team act out selfishly. We had you know, the, the Douglas Costa thing where he grabbed the player by the neck, threw him down, and now we have this. The, these are clearly two incidences where the, the players put themselves and their, and their own feelings and position and pride or whatever – ahead of the team. You can't do that. You can disagree with the coach, but you can't show him up publicly like that. It just, that, that is like one old soccer one-on-one. You can't do that. Raheem Edwards playing the role of leader, you know, kudos to him, bringing him back. Um, it, you know, I don't know what the deal with, with Zavaleta, why, why Jovalich didn't listen to him. Um, but Jovalich wanted to play. He wanted to start. He wanted to prove himself. He got to do all of those things. He had an assist. He had a really good game. Yes. He, it was two to nothing. It's time to, to to close out the game. You're probably not going to do it with a guy uh, that that's you know looking to score more goals. You need to get a little bit more defensive at this point. As you mentioned, Chicharito stayed in. So, so if you're going to take Jovic out, why not Chicharito? Well, Chicharito's still trying to 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 find his form and fitness after that injury. He needs minutes. Jovic doesn't. He's been playing all all preseason. He doesn't need the minutes or the time. It was a good decision by Greg. And even if it wasn't, he's the coach. That's his decision. You're the player. Go sit on the bench. Yeah, it, it, this is, it, and Greg uh, addressed this afterwards, saying, "I like that. He's fiery. He wants to be in for the last twenty minutes in a game that's up to nothing." Because he, he doesn't he wants, like that, though. He doesn't. He doesn't like that. Greg I don't think he does. Like no, no. I'm, let me get through what Vanny said, though. Right? He said he said he likes that. He's fiery. He's young. He wants the minutes. He wants the starts. He wants the goals. He is a striker. Knows in the last twenty minutes when you're up to nothing is whenever a striker can score a goal again. He wants to get a goal. He wants to do all those things. Um. There was zero reason for me to keep Jovalich in that game. I like Chicha in that game later because Chicha actually does a better job of holding the ball up a lot of times. Uh, Chicha does a better job of of, of passing out of things. Uh, Jovalich is a little more one minded in that. Um, he'll turn and and try to try to do stuff. He'll turn and try to score. And in a game that was two nothing, and the Galaxy were basically like, this game needs to be over for us outside of a couple chances that they've had. Uh, in a game. That you know, we'll wait for that really good chance. Jovalich coming off is pro- is the correct move, and you could pull Chicharito in that same spot. Uh, you're going to lose some ball control with that um, if you do that. So I, I understood why why Vandy makes that that call. Uh, Jovalich has started in a lot of these games. He didn't get all of the great players because whenever you have Jovalich on the field, um, a lot of times that means you don't have Chicharito on the field. Now, if those two play nicely like they have been, then Jovalich is going to score a lot of goals this season. Um, he could very easily pick up a lot of stuff off of Chicha. And Javier Hernandez, you can say what you want about that guy. Uh, he talked about tasting the sunshine, uh, which was a, a little misspeak, but it was it made it better because he said that. Um, so this isn't me hounding on him, but he talked about tasting the sunshine, the release, uh, the relief that comes with with winning a game like that because uh, there's pressure. But for say whatever you want about Chicha, he's not a selfish guy. He tried to play Jovalich in a, multiple times in that game. Uh, it didn't come out for one reason or the other. Um, it wasn't always perfect, those types of things. But I mean, Jovalich played a very, very pivotal role in this game, getting that opening goal. There's zero reasons for him to be trotting around like he hasn't had plenty of opportunities to score goals so far this season. Uh, he has. He hasn't done it. That's not a that's that's a knock on him up to a certain point, but 
uh, you know, if he if he wants to come off the bench and play later in games, then I bet uh, I bet Greg Vanny will let him do that. But instead, he started him in this game, which is a, a, a good move for them that the Galaxy played well in this formation, the four, four, two, the three, five, two attacking in that defending in the four, four, two. It, it seems to satisfy a lot of what Greg Vanny likes to do. People speculating with the signings and sort of how you're doing it. If you want to play a three, five, two, you don't necessarily need to have the wingers. You can you probably have all the guys that you need to have. Um, so I would expect that you're going to see more of the three, five, two. I wouldn't be surprised if you see it in Orlando, except for the fact with Ricky Pooj not being available. Does that change how Vanny sort of wants to approach that on the road? That's my, my sort of take. I, I really like the, the two outside backs. And I do like that, that as a, a way to get around the fact that you really don't have the typical wingers that, that, you know, that, that teams that attack the way the galaxy do. It's not, a, it's not a four, three, three with the, with, with the, the, the typical wingers coming out of the midfield. You're using your outside backs and, uh, the two guys they have now, I mean, it, granted, it, what they have one start together, but it sure looks like there's a lot there. Yeah, it, it feels that way. Douglas Costa, by the way, I mean, here's the here. Remember, you said it's selfish move getting a red card um, in the stoppage time, the sixth minute of stoppage time in there, in that game. Um, comes back, gets booed. Uh, okay, cool, interesting. Um, and so then you get him into a position where. He's going to come into this game and he's going to sort of try to redeem himself a little bit. Galaxy already winning. Uh, this game is in hand. It's over. But you get you get cost out on the field to do it. Uh, in his, I think he had 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes. In his 30 minutes uh, on the field, he had three chances created. Uh, caused a whole bunch of havoc. Showed some straight line speed. Uh, did all the things that you would want to see a guy who's trying to redeem himself uh, in terms of, of how that, that plays out. S- having said that, Still a long way to go to ever be able to trust that guy, right? You need to see him be a consistent contributor for the next 10 or 15 games before you're sort of like, okay, now I'll trust you again. Um, And that's my one worry for the LA Galaxy is if they're going to depend on Douglas Costa. Uh, They have a lot of, they have they have to have a lot of faith in that guy, and I don't know that he's worthy of the, of that trust. Well, especially after that Valentine you sent out, you still have that. Yeah, I still have it. Uh, Douglas Costa put out a picture of him. He says, uh, thank you for the love and the hate. We both appreciate it. I don't know who we is. Somebody was like, oh, he means yeah. the team. And I'm like, maybe it means his wife. I don't know who the we is. And I, it's not the we. It's the both part. Like, we appreciate it. I could see being the team. We both appreciate it, meaning him and somebody else, in my opinion. Uh, and obviously, this could also be in English as a 17th language for Douglas Costa, or however many languages he speaks, uh, like where it doesn't quite translate all the way through. Uh, but... Somebody said this sort of feels like he's not taking any responsibility for sort of the position yeah, that he put himself in. It feels like a real unforced error. I think what he needed to say is is anything but what he said. I mean, I I would have preferred something like, I got the message, I need to do better, I will win back your confidence, uh, or, or anything um, other than what he said, because it does look very snarky, um, and he clearly deserved what he got, and... Uh, I just think that there was a better way to respond to that. The the fans are unhappy. I mean, uh, you you hear sometimes Vanny talk about we don't care who's in the building, and and well, you hear other people talk Chicharito. about the supporters. Chicharito talked about Chich- it. He said there's nobody in the stands. We don't care. We like it's there is this this, and I don't mean to cut you off, but there is a us versus them mentality brewing, and this is Douglas Costa in that motivational zone, which I'm like, and, and, go for it, dude. If that's what you think's but, gonna get you there. And I get it, and I know it's successful. I've seen it work in a lot of different places. Um, and Costa may be feeding into that. Maybe the, the Jovalich thing was feeding into that too. But it, 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 ultimately, it's not going to work because the supporters are, it, unlike any other sport, the supporters are the lifeblood of soccer. Uh, and if you piss off your supporters, you may win MLS Cup, but you're going to raise that cup in an empty stadium, and that's no fun for anybody. Yeah, it, it's it's a real the crowd. The crowd was small and and quiet. I know you said they've all been quiet, but this one was was small. Uh, it's still, the, it, it was small. It was smaller than advertised. It was advertised at eighteen thousand. Was probably more on fourteen or fifteen, right? And and I, once again, you could hear Cosmo. The loudest thing in the building was Cosmo banging on the end boards again. That freaks me out. I still don't like it. It's like it's weird how loud that is. And and for those, it just it it's just not a. It's not but like you one know of those comforting things. You're like, oh, yeah, this the, is how it's supposed to work. If if the supporters were there, you probably wouldn't even hear that. Yeah, 18,875. So they listed almost 19,000 
um, in the stadium. Tickets distributed. Tickets, tickets distributed. We know it's always off by a couple thousand or at least 1,500. I won't tell you what Scott French told me, how many people he thought were in there. Uh, but Damien and I agreed that it was probably in the 15 to 16, 17,000 range. I mean, it was it was empty for a Saturday night. Now, uh, let's see. There was a fight going on. There was a big fight going on. And the Lakers were playing in town a playoff game. Um, so those could have contributed, and and they those things have contributed to to a lack in perform a lack in attendance before. Um, but also, I have to imagine the LA Galaxy coming into the game winless um, probably had some effect on that. I have to imagine the supporters group pro- protests had something to do with that. Um, so you look at all these things, and you can say, yeah, I mean that's a that's a small crowd for for what you would normally expect on a Saturday night. Um, and, and I think if if you're AEG, oh, and by the way, speaking of AEG, guess what? I covered their hockey team today. I went out to. <laughs> Yeah. Kings practice. Wait till Dan Beckerman finds out. Now I'm covering his hockey team too. Wow. I don't he's think you're, gonna, I don't think you're going to be on the Christmas card list again. No, he, I'm covering his soccer team and his hockey team. Now Dan Beckerman is not a happy man right now, but the, if you're AEG and you're Dan Beckerman, um, I think what really concerns you is not so much the attendance that's going to go up and down. And um, you know, you're getting sponsorship dollars and, and your season ticket holders. You've already got that money in the bank. I think it's the atmosphere. When your when your mascot banging on the end board is the loudest thing you can hear, uh, and as you mentioned it, it, appropriately, it, it is a baseball crowd. They sit on their hands until something happens, and, that, and, and then if nothing and happens, it's real quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then you go to any other stadium and you hear the drums and the bugles and the chanting and the bugles. Um, it, yep, everybody has the bugles. That's what I. That's everyone what has I know. bugles. Yeah. Have bugles. Uh, yes, of course they do. Um, Nin- but 1940s, hear- 1940s. Everybody has a bugle. It's, when they uh, use the leather balls, it's the only way you can hear the music with the leather balls. Oh, you had to have a bugle. Yes. But um, I, I mean, I think that's got to be the thing. It's just not a soccer environment. And when you go on the road or you watch games on TV or on Apple TV and you hear that environment, you don't hear it at Galaxy Games. And it's like, well, what? It, it just seems so strange. It, it is weird. Let me get to some super chats here. Uh, Roman says uh, five dollar super chat seeing Dryusi uh, score and then mock the Galaxy fans with the celebration just to get it overturned for offside was the best thing ever uh chris two dollar super chat ricky needs rest from coachella on sunday we all need rest from coachella <laughs> but i want to tell you a story so i uh, again you know i'm at the train club it's a bunch of old guys who who play with these trains and then there's like there's younger guys but there aren't as many it's mostly old guys right the whole deal and so our station master who is one of our founding members who's been there for over 30 years the whole deal goes to us he goes i don't think we're gonna have a very busy uh, busy weekend today you know coachella and the long beach grand prix are going on and i and i said i said to kenny i said i said do you really think we pull the same people who go to coachella <laughs> on this train ride i go although that's a good idea maybe we could get some rave music some techno music going here and we could we could, we could have a coachella weekend ourselves anyway just a little side note on that well, and now stagecoach is coming up and that is also an aeg event correct it is i think all golden voice stuff so golden voice is well, the subsidiary of aeg um, so what will dan beckerman say if i show up at stagecoach you're not allowed well, yeah. I, you're not allowed uh, the and, trifecta. Antonio gave us a two dollars super chat. Thoughts on uh, Cuevas? Uh, he's going to G two or the first team. Good question. I think he could split time between both. Um, but he is he's a guy who's played internationally. He's going to be a backup, I think, on the first team. Um, at least that's that's one of my thing that that I'm sort of in there. Uh, that's that's one of the things that I see. Um, yeah, I mean, it, we look at all this and just the atmosphere hasn't been there. We know that. Um, it's loud whenever they score goals and they got two goals. I mean, the people who were there were, were excited to be there and that's nice. I, I think it's interesting though, again, to set it up. Chicharito talked about it. Um, you know, Vanny has hit on it. Douglas Costa sort of seems to be hitting on it. The whole thing is, it's just, we don't care if you don't like us. We don't care if you hate us. We're going to go out there and do things anyway. And it's just this us versus them. And quite honestly, it feels like that way probably all the way through the organization right now. It's like, hey, circle circle the wagons. Circle the wagons. It's us versus them out there. They're trying to say all negative things. They're trying to do all this stuff. And it cracks me up because it's like, start winning games. Start doing things that elicit positive responses and you will get more positivity. Everybody knows this. You and I are part of the them, by the way. We're the noise. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And it's one thing I have to, when Chris Klein was talking to me, it's one thing I always stress to Chris, you know, when he says, I, I don't like your the stuff you're writing. And I said, well, go back and look at 2014. You loved it then. You know what the difference was? You were winning games. That was the difference. Um, so, you know, the fact you don't like what I'm writing, I'm just reporting what's going on. If you win games, I'll, I'll, all the goal scores, I'll get their names right. I'll get the score right. It, you know, they started out at the beginning of the, the fan boycott. You heard some players, especially – Saying things like "We need you with us," you know, we 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 know that it's a tough period, um, but you know, we want you there in the stands cheering for us. You know, we love you, we need you, 
And that's gone away. Uh, and as the boycott has continued, uh, I think, you know, feelings on both sides have hardened. And uh, I just don't see how this us versus them thing is, is actually going to work. What they need now is more openness and more outreach, not not circling the wagons. That's not going to do any good. Yeah, it, it's it, uh, by the way, Darren says, you know, there were more people on the berm than in Victoria Block. I mean, the supporters group section was very empty there. And then they had the berm open too. understand that 18, somebody asked why the berm was even open. Right. And I, I have the I mean, this is what I think the answer is. There's those are cheap tickets to sell up there. Right. You can sell cheap tickets and sort of like in these packages for that are cheap on the berm. And so the berm was open because they could sell cheap tickets up there and get some people on the state. And I mean, usually whenever the berm is open, that means you're going to a sellout at least. Right. You're getting a sellout if the berm is open. But if you're trying to sell ticket packages and do things to a team that has so far been unimpressive outside of this game against really Austin, um, at least results wise, because I don't want to pen them. I don't think the Galaxy have played horribly this year. Uh, they've had some bad games. Houston certainly was one of those. But in other and other times they've played well. Um, that being said, if you're trying to sell that product right now and you're winless in seven, uh, it's harder to do. And so if you have cheaper tickets, if you have packages, hey, I'll give you four hot dogs and four drinks and you can have $10 tickets, right? Like if you add all the stuff that they're getting in there, it's like a $350 value and they're selling it for 75 bucks. Um, those types of things. Well, here's a stupid question, but with this Apple TV thing, um, the idea of, as you said, trying to get people to come in and maybe sample the product, maybe they'll come back, maybe they won't. Um, Apple TV makes it harder to do that, right? Because, I mean, if it was on Channel 13, if a game was on locally, even even on Spectrum Sportsnet, people might stumble across it. If you don't subscribe to Apple TV, the chances of you stumbling across a Galaxy game are, you know, are, are close to nil. And o Outside of, like, it, what, the three or four that have been on Fox so far this year, the Galaxy have played eight games? Well, I mean, I, I, it just... 40% of the games, and this is my problem, 40% of the games are outside of the uh, of, of the paywall. So I just, it, it's like, hey, how many casuals were the, were the was MLS sucking in anyway? That's my question. Well, I, I mean, my point would be is if they're selling the berm tickets as a way to sort of goose attendance and to get people to sample the product in a cheap way, uh, you know, if, if putting your, your, your games, even some of them, behind a paywall, I think you're going to lose that casual fan that you might be trying to draw in. And and I don't know if the Galaxy ever really spent a lot of time and effort trying to draw those fans. I think, like most teams, have relied on their season ticket holders and their supporters. Well, one of those groups is gone now. Yeah. So you have to replace them somewhere. Yeah, the it will continue. I mean, this is the stuff we keep watching. Um, I wanted to point out some just some things. Uh, Ricky Pouch was the uh, was one of the top highly rated players in this game. Eight point five along with Delgado. Eight point five. Uh, Chicha at seven point eight. I thought all of the LA Galaxy players actually had a really good. So who's like the lowest on the whole? Seven point oh for Caseros. Seven point oh. Seven point oh. Seven point oh. Seven point oh for Caseros is the lowest. That's a pretty good night. That also means that you probably played against a pretty bad team and and the orange little bubbles on the right side and the green and blue bubbles on the left side sort of give you the indications of that. Um, I just thought it was really interesting. Again, Douglas Costa coming off the bench had a 7.3. Um, so, you know, I thought he had a good effect on, on a lot of things. Um, just, just sort of trying to peruse through this. I thought the XG was really interesting in this one, Kevin, because a lot of times we look at the LA Galaxy and we talk about them just ticking away at low percentage shots and that equals and adds up to, if you take 20 low percentage shots, it equals like, you know, 1.3 XG, but you didn't have any chances that were above like 10% probability of going in. Um, and I think in this particular game, you actually saw the results of some of that. You saw the XG um, in a positive light. Uh, there were three really big chances. The LA Galaxy were able to to uh, to settle on two of them. Uh, the last one missed by Ricky Pouge uh, towards the end, I think in the 84th minute, whenever he hit a shot wide. I think it was a left-footed shot uh, that he took wide. Uh, if we look at the XG just in terms, again, ticky-tacky, ticky-tacky stuff in the first half, and then in the second half, the chances jump up, and the LA Galaxy were able to put things some things away. So Ricky Pouge, again, 53.53. Uh, on the XG uh, in the 85th minute, um, almost uh, um, the highest, one of the highest rated chances, and and the Alex, the Galaxy didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't convert on it. So um, that's sort of the the interesting stuff from the game. Should we go to um, one the roster? I wanted to show you this, and this was before Cuevas even signed, uh, but I wanted to show you where the Galaxy are. 28 with Gino Vivi, uh, with Mauricio Cuevas, according to Tom Bogart, also joining. That is 29. Uh, the LA Galaxy have 29 of 30 roster positions filled, uh, and that means right now they have 11 of 11 international slots. That's three more. They've had to buy three slots 
this time, Kevin. Um, so they're up to 11 right now. Uh, one of our guys, uh, Romero in the discord, Romero was saying, I think that's the record is 11. Like the other teams have had 11 too, but I think that's the record is the most international slots is 11. Um, and I don't see the LA galaxy going past that, uh, from right now. So what's the salary look like? Do you have that? I don't, I don't, we have so many guys who didn't play in the league now that got added that I don't have a good guess of, of where they are. Um, just the guys that are on there right now. And I'm missing one, two, three, four, five. I'm missing five of them. Uh, I'm about 21.7 million in guaranteed salary. Don't quote me on that. I have to go back and make sure that everything actually works correctly in that. Um, and some of these are these are all estimates from last year too. So there could be increases in there that I'm not accounting for and all that stuff. Um, Greg Vanny has always been a big budget kind of coach. He was in Toronto. They always led the league in in salary every year, and he's kind of brought that thing over to the Galaxy as well. Yeah, I, well, I, I mean the, 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 the Galaxy. The, mid, the Galaxy were wind up already high right? there. Yeah, they'll wind right yeah. up. I, I imagine, but the Galaxy were always in that that realm anyway. I don't think Greg Vanny brings that over. Only in no, 2017 last, did they try to actually cut payroll. But but last year was the I think a record for the Galaxy. They were like twenty seven and a half million. I think that's the highest payroll in, in franchise history. A lot. It's a lot of money. Uh, it's a lot of money going there for for sure. Um, I want to get to some other of the stats that we have. Basically, the uh, the LA Galaxy are at forty six point one percent in terms of the total available minutes uh, played uh, for those designated players. Um, hold on, I'm going to fix that, make it a little bigger. There we go. Uh, 46.1% is your total uh, number there right now. So Ch Javier Chicharito Hernandez has played basically 30% of the total available minutes. Douglas Costa has played 8.5% of the total available minutes. And Ricky Pouche so far has played 100%. Of course, that will change whenever he doesn't uh, play in the next game. Yes. Anything on that? You see, you felt thought like you were going to say something. No, you're good. Uh, no, just okay. that number, the Douglas Costa number. Wow, that yeah. really. I know he's had the injury and everything else, but that really jumps out at you. Yeah, um, he hasn't played a lot, and then he gets suspended, and blah blah blah. The whole thing uh, sort of goes down. The LA Galaxy get their first win, so we can finally do a point percentage. Uh, so we can sort of tell you how many points uh, the LA Galaxy uh, or, or what their point percentage. So I always count a win and a draw as the same right? Because that means you got a point or better. This is sort of that thing. And so in the MLS cup winning years, you could go 70%. Uh, you could go 60% on the point percentage in the 2011 and 2012, 2011 was an 85%. Mostly that was a lot of wins. And if you didn't win, there were a lot of draws. So 85% of the time, the galaxy got a point or better. Um, that was in 2011 and 2014. It was 79.4 last year. And the year before, both under Greg Vanny, they're at 64.7%. So under 65% point percentage uh, for the LA Galaxy under Greg Vanny so far. Um, so I thought that well, was interesting. But the good news is they are in uh, three points out of the playoff position. So like I said, we'll be working on that magic number soon. And uh, we talked about last week, uh, the last four full seasons, you needed to, to get 42 points uh, to finish ninth. That's been the average the Galaxy can do that if they get 1.38 points a game over their final 26 games. If they average 1.38, which is doable, and we've talked about before, this team is way, way, way too talented not to be a, a playoff team. And 1.38, that looks pretty doable, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it should be. I mean, the Galaxy just win some games in a row. That, that takes care of a lot of things. Go be, win Orlando, win in Orlando, and you might be above the line in terms of the playoff race. I mean, and then you come home and play Colorado, and all of a sudden we could be looking at a three game win streak, and they could be, you know, right in the middle of the table. It's the, the problem becomes whenever you look at sort of where everybody else is in New England at 20 points, right? And the LA Galaxy sitting at six. Who, points. Who's, their, who's the coach at New England? Uh, so I've heard it's Bruce Arena. That's what I've heard. 71 years old, and he's again leading the league. Uh, it's it's just remarkable. I mean, yeah, as you said before, we're not surprised, but we can be in awe at the same time. I mean, just amazing. Uh, By the way, one hour one hour left. Yeah, one, yeah, one hour left until the uh, the transfer window closes. So New England and Cincinnati at twenty points. Hey, who coaches Cincinnati? Oh yeah, that's right, Pat Noonan, right? Pat Noonan. For, for, and who's his assistant? Who's his assistant? Uh, is Dave Sarakin over there, or is he not? Kenny 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 Arena and Dominic Kinnear. Wow. Yes. See, the, uh, 
Galaxy people are winning everywhere except with the Galaxy. <laughs> they they don't have Galaxy people there. They do now with Craig Vanny, but they haven't. They had, they didn't have Galaxy people. Uh, we look over at the Western Conference: St. Louis at 19 points, Seattle at 19 points, LAFC at 18. Uh, LAFC still the best points per game. They're still a game behind the top two, uh, who both played nine. Uh, the LA Galaxy at eight. So. Um, that's sort of where we sit on uh, the standings. LA Galaxy in 13th place, again, six points, uh, but Salt Lake is at nine points, um, and that is just three points away. Uh, the LA Galaxy at 0.75 points per game, still not good enough to jump Colorado, but they will be playing Colorado. Um, so, as you say, uh, a chance to get on the point. Kevin Cabral's homecoming, Jossie Zardis' yep. homecoming against Austin, so he got a nice little cheer whenever he came on uh, for Austin. Uh, Dan Stara scored for Houston in their game winner. Uh, I think that was a one nothing win for Houston, and it was a big, bad Dan Stairs goal there uh, as well. So, I mean, you know, Galaxy players doing the thing all over. Uh, now it's a matter of whether or not the Galaxy can sort of close things out. I'm looking for... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still checking yeah, my phone. I know. Nothing, from I, Dallas, I, nothing from Dallas. I sort of want to... So I'm sort of trying to to go through this and see if there's anything else that we have because we are wrapping up on things. Um, got Cuevas, you got Gino Vivi. I, you know, I don't know. I don't think that they are going to go for an international. If they do, again, I think they can move that international slot with Vivi. So I think they understand the flexibility that is there with that. Um, but I think I think this one's done. I mean, uh, who's answering the phone right now in Europe at at? at whatever t- o'clock in the morning it is in uh in 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 amsterdam or or wherever else there in Austria. anybody who wants to make it anybody who wants to make a deal i guess let's see if we get hey siri uh what time is it in austria in vienna austria it's 602 a.m oh well you could start calling them now they're gonna be up like you could wake yeah, them up exactly. right 602 a.m we're almost there very interesting. Um, so anyway, that's just just trying to get an international. I think the Galaxy are done on that. Um, that's at least the way I feel. I don't know that they can't bring in a free agent. Again, there's no rules against bringing in free agents outside of the window. The only restriction the LA Galaxy have is the um, one where they can't add an international during the summer transfer window. So even if it's a, if it's a free agent during the summer transfer, transfer window, I would imagine they couldn't do that. Uh, we're also, if we're being very clear... Uh, we are one hour away from Chris Klein being unsuspended from soccer operations. Oh, yes. That's another big one. Yes. So that's that's because his suspension is lifted um, after this transfer window closes. So so you think you'd just pop out of the penalty box, you know, and just head right into the office? I mean, let's be honest. If it was me, yeah, I would absolutely do that. I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm here. And, you know, and I was like, look, could, I can come in the room now. If, 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 if Vanny and, and Will Kuntz nail that deal at 10 o'clock and then... Chris skates in at 10.01. Hey, what's going on, guys? Did we do it? Did we get it done? Well, I mean, I think it's, it, I think one, we should, we should acknowledge the farce that like anybody is there watching him not interact with this, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> does, does MLS have a, like, a, an ankle bracelet on him? Like, they, they know where he's at and hope you can't go into that office, Every, you know? Everybody has to wear a body cam with things like the cops. You know, uh, speaking of the, the hockey thing, when I, I covered a lot of hockey, but going back out there today for the first time in about a year, uh, after all this soccer, the first thing that really struck me is, man, those nets are small. Those goals are small. How do they ever get the ball in there? The ball, the puck, the puck. Yeah. This is what, I don't know why they let you cover other sports sometimes. <laughs> it's scary. They let you do like NASCAR and they let you do hockey. Occasionally you'll do NASCAR is easy. It's traffic. Just... <laughs> oh, he's going to make another left turn. Look at that. Oh, here's another left turn. Uh... It's just traffic. Very interesting. All right, so a little less than an hour left, uh, but we're going to wrap things up because uh, there's not that much to talk about. Uh, I will tell you, the LA Galaxy did get a sponsorship. I wanted to highlight this just a little bit. Uh, Omega Accounting Solutions, uh, the LA Galaxy, quote-unquote, score one for small businesses with the first-of-its-kind partnership. I... I always wonder what like what makes this first of a kind, but I'll I'll you know I'll bite. The multi-year agreement in, uh, includes official partner designations and strategically places the accounting firm at the forefront of Southern California's vibrant sports and small business community. Um, the really interesting thing I saw brokered by AEG Global Partnerships. We've talked about the advantages that AEG can provide in this, um, the ability to negotiate big deals uh, with clients and. Kevin, sometimes it's it's like this. It's like they don't even, all they have to do is pick up the phone because some guys are like, hey, we'd like to partner with you guys. 
Like we have this much money. What do you, what properties do you think you could put us in line for? And they're like, Oh, well let's do, let's spread this out over Coachella and stagecoach. And then we can give you the LA galaxy too. Like there's stuff like that, that they can sort of pitch and provide. So the global partnership deal on this gets this uh, sponsorship again, looking at the quality and quantity of sponsorships is something that has been highlighted as, as one of the overall arching overarching successes for the LA galaxy um, well, I, during, you know, during this downtime. It, yes. Maybe I'm missing it. I see the synergy between the teams. I see the, the Galaxy and the Kings seem to have some interaction. But, and, and again, maybe I'm missing it, but I don't see the synergy between the other uh, uh, AEG products. Like, what, wouldn't it be, maybe there is a presence, someone that, that has gone out there could tell us, is, is there a, uh, any kind of a Galaxy presence at Stagecoach at Coachella? I don't see any Coachella or Stagecoach advertisements at, at, at Galaxy functions. Maybe they don't need to. Maybe they're, they've sold all the tickets they're going to sell. They don't need to. But it just seems, I mean, you're... The audiences are the same, right? It's a young, a young audience for the most part, eighteen to thirty-four. Those are the soccer fans. Those are the people who are going to Stagecoach and and Coachella, right? I mean, it, it, you're going after the same people. You're offering an entertainment product. Yes, it's different, but it appeals to the same sort of uh, group. You, you would think that there'd be some more synergy there. I don't know. I maybe there is, like you said. Uh, you know, the fact that they have uh, a preseason soccer tournament out there. Um, is is an interesting sort of synergistic move, right? To try to like sort of, but but I I would expect that you'd have more Coachella stuff or more stagecoach stuff that you're trying to sort of do. I mean, what what if they had Bad Bunny play in the tournament next year, like right before Coachella? Like you know, come watch Bad Bunny play and sing. Well, I mean, there again, and we've talked about it about this preseason is that that tournament could be so much if you wanted it to be. Um, so maybe it'll grow and progress because. Even without the supporters groups there, you could see the people that were filtering in. You saw people who made a who made a a a, a, a trip out of it, right? Who'd come down from Portland and came down from you know the other places, uh, you know St. Louis to come see their team for the first time was there. So there's a chance that they do that. Um, well, when you if you think outside the box, like for example, baseball spring training. Anyone who's been to a baseball spring training game, whether they like baseball or not, it's a fun environment. It's so relaxed and loose, and the players you know, interact with the fans. It's great. Spring training didn't used to be spring training that developed. I mean, back in the day, it was guys going out in sweatsuits and sweating and no one would come to the games. The baseball made it. And, and the, the States of Arizona and Florida made it an event. Why couldn't you do that with soccer? You yeah. said, you know, people coming down from Portland to see this, you see the, the players in a much more intimate setting. They're a little more relaxed, a little friendly. Uh, you know, the, the, it's not the tension of the regular season or a cup game. Why not think outside the box? Why not say, okay, we're going to make this into soccer spring training? It, it, I mean, that's what it has the the chance to be doing. Although uh, Mr. Bravino does does put out a, a correct, and I think a correct take at least right now, which is uh, why why don't you see Taylor Swift uh, pr- promoting her tour? She doesn't need to. She sold all the tickets. She she's very popular. Yeah. Coachella as of right now still operates and holds a somewhat mythic reputation. Um, I don't know if I, I feel like that's oversold. Um, and I feel like it's been overrated in a lot as somebody who's never gone. I sh- I'm sure I have an opinion on this. Um, but Coachella still has like that mythic sort of spot in terms of the music festival you have to go to. So I'm sure they're not hurting on selling tickets, but it, like you said, it would be nice for them to have like an LA galaxy booth or a fairly large LA galaxy booth at Coachella. It would be nice because if you're promoting all of the interbrand uh, communications, that type of thing. So anyway, uh, by the way, somebody asked about uh, Mutatu, and you were talking. You and I were talking about this. I'm like, I'm yeah. like, it's not really worth bringing up anymore. In fact, it's not worth asking Greg Vanny. the The problem isn't with Greg Vanny. Um, the problem isn't with the LA Galaxy. Uh, the problem is quite rightly placed at the feet of the immigration system in the United States. Now, if you are not in the country with all your proper paperwork, and then they find out that you're not in the country with all your proper paperwork, trying to unwind that clock is very, very difficult to do. Um, and I imagine that that's what we've sort of bumped heads. So I, I think for some of you, this is your first foray into actually knowing how long things take within the U.S. immigration system. Uh, but the LA Galaxy have been diligently working and trying to get Farai Mutachi back here. Um, and so far, it hasn't happened. Um, well, yeah, when, once you break that law, then, then you're like really on a, on, on a big X list. You know, you, you have to do a lot of stuff to get to it you know to to fix your record i i will say that we were talking about this before and it's somewhat related uh latif blessing who played for, uh, for sporting kansas city and lafc for a number of years almost quit and went home a couple of years ago he missed his family back in ghana so much and they the family lafc was just not able to get any kind of uh traction on trying to get paperwork for them to come even to visit him 
Uh, and he missed his family so much he was going to quit and go home. And it was a real dark period for him. And, and that was one of the th reasons behind the trade to New England. He just he wanted to be closer to Africa where he could make a trip maybe in a long weekend. He wanted to be closer to home. Well, he's, what, three, four months into a stay at New England. And Bruce Arena's New England Revolution has already gotten his uh, Latif Blessings family visas to come over. I'm not saying LAFC didn't try or didn't do the right thing. I'm just saying New England was able to make it happen. And you wonder if if... I'm not saying the galaxy don't know what they're doing. Clearly they do, but it, it just, it, it was, it just reminded me when you, when we we're talking about that story that Latif blessing worked for years to get his family here and four months in new England is all it took to, yeah. to yeah. untie Cam that knot. Cameron asks, so is this for eyes fault or Michigan stays? Well, I don't know that there is a, I don't know that there is a, a fault. Um, I just don't think that, you know, everything, not, nothing, they just sort of fell through the cracks for a while. Um, and, and while that fell through the cracks, he was able to, to stay and play at Michigan state and all that. And then whenever it came time for the LA galaxy to actually get him, you know, a visa and, and do all that stuff that he was supposed to do. And it was, it was, it was not, not okay anymore. I think the varsity blues scandal showed us that, uh, uh major colleges do not do a lot of vetting on their, uh, athletes coming in that, that very if well they, could be, that if they're getting well money for bringing the guy in, then he can come in no matter what his visa says. All right, we're calling it um, for right now. There's about 50 minutes, a little 49 minutes until the the, the transfer window officially closes. Remember, so, so you know what that you know what that means. Yeah. If there's news, if there's news made, it'll be news to us. Yeah, and it will be. And um, there is nothing that says that anybody has to announce anything tonight. Um, and yeah. more than likely, if the galaxy wanted to announce something and teams wanted to announce something, they're going to do it in the morning. Uh, 9 a.m., 10 10 a.m. are very good times to announce news. Just letting you go. Uh, all, uh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. are usually the the morning windows. Um, and then if it's the afternoon, it's like a one, two, or three. So that way it gets in before um, anybody has to like leave for work or anything like that. So those are usually the press release, the announcement times. There can be 30s in there as well. There's no hard and fast rule. I'm just saying you're, you're yeah. unlikely to get an 8 a.m. announcement. Well, we could see the starting lineup in Orlando and find out the Galaxy got a guy. <laughs> Very well could be. So uh, that's where we sit on that. Uh, by the way, Miss Provino says that Becky G's kind of like a crossover for, for the Galaxy going to Coach. Very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So again, I asked the question in the press conference whenever we were all sitting around before anybody came in. I go, the only important part of Coachella was, was Becky G wearing her engagement ring whenever she was on the stage at Coachella. That's what I wanted to know because that's that's a whole thing right now, Kevin. You know about that, right? I'm not telling who's you something. Big, no, I, and I don't think she did. I, I I looked and I couldn't really tell, but I don't think she did. Now, who's bigger, Becky G or Ricky Pooj? Becky G. Yeah, no, I don't mean bigger. Oh, like as in oh, and size, in, as size, and stature, as size. They're pretty. They're, they're, they're pretty both similar. pretty. They're both pretty short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, you can fit them both in your pocket. That's they. They're they're kind of tiny. Um, all right, that's where it is. LA Galaxy do get some signings across, probably. And I will say this, it was something that we talked about in the Discord and somebody rightfully said, 50% of you are going to be mad that the LA Galaxy didn't sign anybody of quote-unquote stature if they don't sign anybody in this transfer window. Uh, but 50% of you would have been mad had they signed somebody as a quote-unquote panic buy or somebody you had deemed as a panic buy um, right at the end of the window. So... In a lot of ways, and I feel this way for the LA Galaxy, it's lose-lose for them unless it's an absolute home run with the signing, right? Unless they nail it. Uh, Paul Ariola is about as high as you could possibly get on that sort of known name U.S. men's national team player, a guy who could come in and directly affect the attack and the offense for the LA Galaxy. And even if you had to give Raheem Edwards and Efrain Alvarez away in a trade, you would think that you got, and a whole bunch of money, because whatever money you have, you're going to have to empty your pocket, shake them out. There's going to be buttons and paper clips in there, maybe a rubber band too. You're going to have to give it all to FC Dallas in order to make that happen, especially to an in-conference rival. If that happens, people will, well, some people are going to complain about Paul Areola, Crimea River some other time. Um, the but the bottom line is that if they made a signing that you don't deem worthy enough, you're going to complain because it's a panic signing. And if they don't make a move, then you're going to complain that they didn't make a move. Um, in some ways, uh, you look at this as the failings of an LA Galaxy organization who put themselves in a position, Kevin, to to want to wait to sign people late in the window because they wanted to be deliberate because they didn't have a summer transfer window. A lot of the situation that you're seeing the LA Galaxy try to work their way through is unprecedented in terms of teams not having a summer window. And 
because they had to come up with a strategy for that in order to do it, you're seeing that strategy play out. And being nobody who's really done this, that strategy is completely untested, which means that it's just a guess. And it could... But... Yes. Go ahead. No, but... No. Go ahead, you. But having said all that... Um, I still think that there's there's some blame there in the LA Galaxy front office if they don't get what they wanted or they don't get what they needed in this um, because they tried to put a strategy together to offset the punishment they were going to get in the summer. And if they didn't get their guys in this window and they aren't able to pick somebody up in the league at the summer, and again, we have to wait a long time for that to sort of play out, That's but that's games where they could have had people in. Right. So by waiting and trying to be deliberate, they learned some things. They learned that Efrain Alvarez, this isn't his year. They learned that, um, you know, Chicharito got injured and that, you know, Jovalic is good, but they probably need another offensive weapon. Right. They learned that Memo Rodriguez can't play at the wing. They learned that Raheem Edwards is probably not going to be your left back and I'm going to have to get, a, you know, a left back guy in, in Ade. So they learned these things by waiting, but taking the corrective action in the time allowed. Um, I don't know that you can give them a pass for that. So that's sort of, but, that's, that's a wishy-washy see, way of saying, I don't know yet. That, see, you're so negative. You're negative, negative, negative Nelly. And I'm here to tell you the Calvary is coming. Help is on the way in 44 minutes. Chris Klein's suspension is over and it is rainbows and butterflies from here on out. My friend, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I'm always, I'm always up for a colorful reunion of any sort. Um, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Uh, that's where it is. The LA Galaxy now about less than 45 minutes away from the transfer window opening, which, of course, you're listening to this now on a Tuesday morning because Monday mo- Monday night is done. The show is over. You weren't here for the live show, so you're listening to it on a podcast. And you're like, don't you know what already happened, guys? And we're like, no. We yeah, don't, go, go, we don't go, to Josh's, go to Josh's Twitter feed. This is like a moment. This is like a time capsule. This is like before the trade. This is where we were before everything changed when they got Zava. And they brought him in right <laughs> can, at the deadline. Can, can I tell you something? Somebody, somebody in the chat room, uh, Denny's says Baxter knows something. Can I be the first one? <laughs> can I be the first one to tell you that? No, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Uh, I don't either, by the way. I don't know, you know something either. So um, that's it. That's all we got. Uh, Kevin, anything else remember you want to get to? One through? time, I, I just remember that one time we had a show and there was something about to break and we both thought it was going to break. And you remember that? I was driving around Valencia talking to you in the car because I didn't want to stop the recording. And then we stopped and said, we're not going to release this show tonight because something could happen. And then the next morning it did. I don't remember what it was, it, but it was it was fairly huge. Pete Vianis. Pete and, Vianis. Yeah, we, yep. Do you remember that? We almost talked about doing two shows. Like, yep. oh, we can't believe he got fired. And then, well, that, oh, we can't believe he didn't get fired. That's the show that we told everybody we had technical difficulties on and it never got released, right? That was the one that died. That was There was, there was one that died. Now, we've also done a show where we have known something was happening and so then we didn't release it on a night. Um, and then eventually it came, it, it came, it came correctly true. And then we released, released it in the morning. Uh, it was one of those. So we've, we've done that too, but yes, uh, every once in a while, technical difficulties mean technical difficulties. And every once in a while, technical difficulties mean that we guess wrong and we're not releasing that show. <laughs> we, we, we should have started the show by saying, go to Josh's Twitter feed. And if you see anything interesting there, turn the radio off be, or turn the pod <laughs> off because there's nothing here that's... that makes any sense anymore. Uh, all right. I think that's where we're at. Uh, LA galaxy taking on Orlando coming up on Saturday, uh, that game at Exploria stadium in Orlando, April 29th, 4 30 PM is your TV start time. 4 39 PM is your kickoff time. Uh, this is on MLS season pass on Apple TV. No free games this particular weekend. Um, so that's I, at least no free games for the galaxy. There's always free games, uh, available, both the nationally televised game and on, uh, Apple TV does some free games outside of the, the paywall as well. So and Dan Beckerman, I'm coming to the crypt. I'll <laughs> see you at hockey game. Very good. All right. If you're looking for Mr. Kevin Baxter, it's at K Baxter 11, head on over there and LA times.com. You can see Kevin's weekly column hockey coverage, hockey, hockey coverage. coverage. That's right. Hockey <laughs> coverage is in there as well. So make sure you get it. All right. That's what we got. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Gessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Uh, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Our podcast is there, so you can check it out, like, subscribe, do all those fun Here's things. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. No. No. Nothing. Okay, nothing. Okay. <laughs> all right. That about does it for Mr. Kevin, the Panda Baxter, who's going to mute his microphone any second. I'm Josh Pato Gessman. We hope you've enjoyed Corner of the Galaxy from the Box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, 
Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>